mic on. There we go. Everything is on. What's up, Kevin? What's up? What's up, Jared? I'm happy to be here. I'm I'm so excited. I'm 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 here to introduce you to this awesome man to my right. This is Kevin White, who runs marketing and demand at Common Room. Before we dive in all into dark funnels, I want to take a moment to say a big thank you to Common Room, who are diamond partners for Revcon. We really couldn't do this without you. And I made a funny comment in here. I said, go to commonroom.io or uh, or hit Kevin up in one to one or you know some dark area not attributable but you know maybe it was a bad joke i, I want to i'm going to bounce past to kevin here kevin welcome my friend i, I got the joke i lol'd uh <laughs> but i didn't i didn't write it in the chat so my bad um well thanks so much jared and thanks for the rev genius team for having me um i'm going to see if i can uh figure out the controls here i'm sure everyone's made some sort of joke around how they can't get the screen sharing working so Let's see if I can manage this. And OK, looks like my screen is going. I have my show notes on. Let's jump into things. Um, so yeah, uh, like Jared mentioned, I'm Kevin. I lead the, the marketing team at Common Room. Uh, my talk today is all about the dark funnel, um, something you've probably heard of. And if you're here, you probably want to you know, learn how to make some sense of it. And hopefully, I'll get us there. Um, one thing, some things you'll notice throughout my, the deck here is that um, the uh, I, I'm a big fan of Mid Journey, so you'll see a lot of Mid Journey um, images. Uh, and I have 30 slides and just under 30 minutes, so it's going to be pretty rapid fire. So let's get to it. Um, first thing, quick personal story on my end. So um, uh, this story is about a recent software purchase that I made, and so you can probably kind of guess where I'm going at with this, but. The, the journey or the story starts uh, a long, long time ago. Um, this guy, Pep, who is up here on the top left, um, he's pretty well known in marketing circles. Um, I first heard of him through uh, this uh, website, content site called CXL. He now does a podcast and um, I'll just put a pin on that for a second. So fast forward to um, just a little bit over a year ago, I was actually at a different company. Um, this was a data company and you know, my CEO, as um, CEOs tend to do, hits me up and goes, you know, we need a new homepage. Um, so this was a trigger that put me into market to look for some user, eventually look for some user feedback software. So as our homepage was being designed, um, I, you know, wanted to get feedback on it from users. I've used a product called user testing before, which is great, but I was looking for something a little bit more bespoke. So, um, you know, instead of Googling stuff, I turned to uh, a small tight knit marketing group that I'm part of. And I was like, you know, what are y'all using? They uh, mentioned, you know, we've, we use this, I've heard this good things about this um, product called winter, um, but haven't used it. So then I go to another group um, that has uh, as a Slack group that has thousands of marketers and growth and product people. And instead of like typing in any kind of uh, note there or, or question, I just do a search, um, which is a good hack if anyone wants to do that. And I search for the product winter with a Y. Um, this brings me to a thread of um, a bunch of like feedback from users and pros and cons. And I trust it a lot more than um, reading G2 reviews, which we all know can be gamed. Um, then I go to their, their page. Uh, I realized that um, you know Pepper is behind this, um, which is really great. I, I trust Pep. Um, it's a product-led um, type product, so I can sign up, um, use the chat bot to ask a few questions, and then you know launch my launch my test. And in a few days, I get results back. The results are from our ideal target audience, and it's a great success. And then um, to tie everything together, um, just a few days ago, um, one of my old colleagues, um, her name's Julie on the design team. Uh, and she's like, I remember we ran this experiment, but I forget the company. And so I made uh, a word of mouth recommendation to her and you know, there you have the complete growth loop. Um, and so what I'm getting at with this is this pretty much everything leading up to this path to purchase is the dark funnel at play. And I think it's pretty representative of the way like most people make purchases nowadays. Um, and you know, I, who knows what the like best definition of the dark funnel is, but it's dark because most of these like really influential touch points um, don't show up in our normal marketing attribution. 
Okay, so I think you know a lot of people here understand this in this way, why there's so much like mystery and buzz around the dark funnel. It's like this scary thing and why it's becoming more popular. There's this guy, Chris Walker, who's kind of uh, uh, exposed that mystery and popularized the term and has like a lot of hot takes and has gained a massive following in doing so. And also it's like so much of a thing that it's been trademarked by one of our competitors at Common Room who shall not be named, but let's hope that um, by giving this talk, I don't get a season and desist letter from them. Okay, so um, let's jump into uh, some, some trends to substantiate what we're, what we're feeling. Um, and I think the go-to example here is um, uh, Apple uh, doing uh, Apple tracking transparency, kind of sticking it to Facebook, um, not you know giving users the, uh, the agency to like not allow themselves to be tracked. Um, the other example is these pesky little things that you know ruin our user experience on websites um, that a lot of people opt out to out of uh, when given the opportunity. And these are these um, privacy preference things that GDPR um, helped uh, or, or nudged everyone to implement. <clears throat> and then finally, the last one here is something that I think a lot of people maybe don't know about, but I find pretty interesting. It's called query parameter stripping and um, it's a feature of browsers like Firefox and Brave. So, you know, even if you are using a UTM parameter or um, are trying to, you know, use Google Ads and get that GCLAD um, uh, tracking your in your URLs, these browsers like know that and they're stripping them out automatically. So that means that like these once tracked links um, and once tracked UTM parameters are now just showing up as direct traffic in your source of truth for attribution. So it's becoming harder and harder to uh, do attribution. Um, and then also kind of like appealing to some of the like analyst authorities, um, you know, Gartner did some research that said reps only have 5% of the um, time with a, a, a user in the purchase process. Um, Salesforce did this like state of sales survey of 77,000 reps and found that buyers are increasingly conducting research before buying. It's just like, yeah, duh, of course they're doing that. I think the other 19% are probably lying because I think everyone does this. And then also McKenzie just say, says that, you know, the surface area of channels people are using for research is growing and growing over time. And of course, all of this is the dark funnel at play. Cool, cool, cool. Everything's looking good. Uh, so, um, so let's uh, see what we can do about it. Um, and we really only have like one option here. It's to, uh, if users are changing the way that they're buying, we have to kind of meet them where they are. Um, and that means figuring out like, how do I identify the right dark funnel channels to go after? Um, how to tap into them and reach our core audience and resonate with them. And then also ideally show how that effort is making an impact. Um, and the good news is it's like, it's totally possible. And um, I'm gonna try and walk through how it's possible and also try not to um, talk my own book at Common Room too much. Okay, so here's how. So um, <clears throat> let's go back to our friend, Chris, uh, Chris Walker. And um, in this hypothetical, let's imagine that um, interest in the topic of the dark funnel, this is a very meta talk, but interest in the topic of dark funnel is something that our sales reps um, uh, use as a purchase signal. Um, this is actually the case for us at Common Room, but uh, that's kind of beside the point. So if I'm a savvy rep, I can jump into LinkedIn. Um, I can look through each of these relevant posts and go through the comments and identify who's in our ICP, send them a re reply to the comment maybe, or send them a, a connect request or a DM. Um, and I actually did this for this just one post here and found out that of the 159 comments that were left, there was about 13 that fit our ideal customer persona uh, at Common Room. And it took me like five minutes to do, do all that, which is like not too bad, um, not too painstaking, but you know, doing this at scale does seem like something that technology should solve for us. Uh, and it actually does to some extent. So for a lot of these like dark funnel, dark social channels, there's APIs that we can connect to. Uh, these two examples here are from uh, documentation on like how to tap into the LinkedIn and Twitter APIs. Um, and you can pull this contextual data about users, their activity and other trades and things like that across many, many dark funnel channels like Twitter, Slack, Reddit, GitHub, like there's a huge list of 
channels where you can tap into these APIs. Um, I will caveat that, that, you know, there's certain restri restrictions um, based on like what permissions you have and, uh, and like if someone's following your brand or not, but it is possible. Um, so there's definitely some like caveats here, but um, that's a little uh, uh, beside the point, I guess. Uh, okay, so um, so uh, the problem with all of these uh, uh, APIs is that they're siloed. Um, so you can find interesting activity across each provider, but it's not super easy to maintain. And it's also, you get this hodgepodge and fire hose of data in all sorts of different formats that your data team essentially has to wrangle. And so what some savvy teams are doing uh, is pulling all this data into a data warehouse and then servicing it to their go-to-market teams. Um, this example is from like a well-known SaaS company in the security space. Um, I didn't get permission to use their logo or else I would have, but uh, it's from a legit company. Um, and they have a growth and data team of about 15 people. Uh, and they built this like data workflow to extract insights from the dark funnel, these channels here on the left. So they'll pull in that API activity um, they'll probably do some sort of like cleanup of the data using DBT or something and stream it into their data warehouse, uh, Snowflake or, you know, whatever your data warehouse choice is. And then they'll take that and push it into the go to market sources of the truth, like Salesforce or, uh, Salesforce in this case, <clears throat> or like a BI tool. Um, so the, <laughs> the big problem here, I think, especially for a lot of people on this on this talk is that like, I don't think everyone has a, uh, a data team um, that's able to do this. Uh, so, um, so typically like when you, what we find is like when this data is collected, it just ends up in a data warehouse and doesn't get to, uh, get to reps. So um, it's great if you're a data analyst or an engineer, but not so much if you're on the go to market side of things. Cause I don't know about you, but like, I don't know SQL all that well. And many people in the go to market world <laughs> don't know SQL. So, um, what we tend to see is the following is that, you know, you get data into a data warehouse, but sales reps don't know how to extract insights um, because they don't know SQL. In many cases, um, they won't have access to the data warehouse. They don't have the keys. Uh, on top of that, like data and analytics teams are pretty backlogged. So if you make requests of them, it's often, you know, too late. You have to work quickly with this data um, because that's when it matters. Uh, and then on top of that, like we don't exactly know what to ask for. So at best, uh, what tends to happen is like this data is getting into a BI tool like Looker or Tableau, um, which is also not super familiar territory for reps. And they're just um, kind of swimming, trying to figure out who to reach out to. Uh, and then another really hard challenge with all this is reconciling the, all of the uh, touch points into a single user identity. Um, and then once you even do that, you still need to want to, you're still going to want to filter the signal from the noise and identify okay, of this activity, who's in our target account, um, who's an ideal customer, um, because it makes a big difference if you know who uh, this, who and like where this activity is coming from. Okay, so um, up until this point, I feel like my talk track has been pretty kind of a bummer, uh, a lot of doom and gloom. Um, so let's uh, hopefully take us to the promised land in the ideal state. And thanks again to Midjourney for helping me with this prompt. Um, Okay, so in our ideal state, we're able to track all of this activity happening across dark channels. Um, this includes like user forums like Reddit or Stack Overflow, um, social channels like Twitter, or LinkedIn, code collaboration, like GitHub. Um, and then also like, you know, one, one channel that a lot of people don't think about is just data that you're, uh, that's in, in your product, uh, product data that is like hidden in a data warehouse. Um, and so the list kind of goes on like all these different signals that you can track, um, but are you know somewhat opaque to our go-to-market teams. And so we want to be able to tie all this activity um, into um, uh, a, a single user. So you know the person posting a question in your Slack community is also the person who signed up for a free trial, or the person who just followed your competitor is from um, a, an ideal target account, um, or when people change jobs. And like the list also goes on of like what you want to do. And then you also want to be able to fill in the blanks of where that user works, their role, et cetera, so you can filter signal from the noise. Um, because you know, intent signals from a college student are a lot different than intent signals from an economic buyer in your territory. And then when we do all that, it unlocks like a ton of different use cases um, and makes us much more efficient at our jobs. So um, we can do things like 
get real-time alerts when uh, a customer or champion changes jobs. We can identify target accounts um, who are active in a GitHub repo or in our LinkedIn channel. Um, we can qualify more leads uh, into the, the top of the funnel, even if they don't fill out a form on our website. Uh, we can listen in on early stages of the buying cycle to get get to prospects before they even start an evaluation and, um, instead of like when their minds are made up and they're in the RFP process with the competitor. So um, there's a ton of different use cases that are possible. Um, I will add a plug in here to check out our playbooks at Common Room. Um, this is something that a lot of these I wrote and our team is writing and um, something I'm very proud of, but a lot of good uh, use cases that you can follow along with um, if you go to that uh, URL there. Maybe I'll plug it into the chat too. Okay, so um, cool in theory, but like let's actually look at a real world use case. Um, and uh, disclosure, uh, this is the part of the talk where I kind of talk about book and talk about common room a lot. But um, I think the takeaway still kind of remains the same, whether you're using us or using something like building something on your own. Um, and so <clears throat> this uh, this use case is from one of our customers. They're they're temporal. They sell software to developers. Um, they their software makes their code more fault tolerant, dur durable, simple, their commercial open source type of product. Um, and they have a big following on GitHub and then also a vibrant um, user base across many channels. Um, so uh, these are the different sources that Temporal um, that cares about that they, that they use to tap into the dark funnel and find uh, revenue opportunities. Um, they connect to the sources um, uh, like GitHub is a, is a big one. Also, um, channels at the top of funnel like LinkedIn, Reddit, and Medium, um, sources of product data, and then also like stuff at the end of the journey, like their CRM or support forum. And what they're doing is they're ingesting all of this data into a platform. Uh, in this case, it's Common Room. And what we do for them on the background is aggregate all of it into a single source of truth. Um, and we use all these like unique identifiers and a bit of AI magic matching uh, to know that Erica here is the same Erica across all these different places. Uh, and then we also you know, do a bit of enrichment so that you know not only that it's Erica, but that she works at uh, our made up company, Sassy, but previously worked at Lyft. And we know her role and her region and what our tech stack looks like and all this other good stuff to know if she's a good fit for us to sell into. Uh, and it's great for one person, but we do this across like all users and all channels. So um, in turn, Temporal has this like really comprehensive view of every user at every stage um, in their path to purchase. So um, this, uh, they actually have matches for like 30,000 plus people, which is a lot for any one person to handle. Um, so, so from here, we give them the tools so they can like start to dig into and extract signal from the noise. This is the kind of the point where you would have all this data into a data warehouse and then you'd use SQL to extract signal from the noise. Um, and so because we have all this like firmographic and uh, user activity data in one place, we can quickly apply some criteria to focus on those people with the highest intent and highest fit. Uh, in this example, we're applying criteria for an ICP, um, which is a combination of like title or org size, amount raised in industry. And then we're adding an extra filter to show if they've been active in our dark funnel and product in the last 14 days. So very quickly, we can get from this like uh, really uh, large uh, scope of, of users matched down to something that's very workable um, for you know individual go-to-market teams. Um, and what's even cooler is that we like save these into different cohorts and build burn down lists for reps that are prioritized and replenished on a daily basis. Uh, it's uh, apologies, like it's a little hard to see this in this example, but we can like grab these users and add them to operationalize things, like add them to an outreach sequence, sync them to Salesforce, send them a LinkedIn DM, like reach them in the channels where we have found them, um, and all this helps with conversion and making your reps and team much more effective. And like one other thing I really wanted to show off because it's kind of new is this contextual lead scoring. So um, we, uh, by, by combining all of this activity data and um, uh, user profile data into one place, you can service up prospects um, based on like thousands of different factors. And what's really cool is that if you, if you hover over like the, the excellent score, you can see the context of what's driving that score. And so if I'm a rep or a marketing person or whatever, I can like look into this and be like, oh, um, you know, this person has all these different traits and here's the recent activity. Like I want to add them to this 
personalized sequence on outreach um, because it's going to like increase my likelihood of getting uh, a conversation. And then last thing here, uh, I have to show the the quote from the customer. Um, so so Temporal is doing this. Their their team's getting a lot of meetings booked and pipeline coming from this um, mode of operation. Uh, and and so um, yeah, it's a it's a really valuable thing for them. And I think like a lot of people on here would get value from it too. And wow, that was fast. Um, only I still have ten minutes left. Uh, thanks everyone. Um, let's go to Q and A. Uh, a few plugs here before we're doing that. Um, you can go to commonroom.io and sign up for this and like plug in your different sources right now. Um, we also have a really strong community uh, uh, on Slack and other places. And then I post a lot about this stuff on LinkedIn. So plug to follow me on LinkedIn or just email me directly. It'll be very dark if you do that, kevin at commonroom.io. So I think that sums it up. Jared's on here. Maybe I'll stop sharing my screen so that we can do more FaceTime. Good. What is that was incredible, Kevin. You know, it's funny. Thanks. I was I was asking, I'm like, what what level of companies or, or what quantity of companies have some level of this sophistication set up already? Yeah, it's really hard. Like, um, that's why I was like, uh, I don't want to like talk <laughs> like, 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 too much. Like that's kind of like the the area where we're like, you know. Uh, fitting into it's like you know doing all these things on your own is like not trivial like you have to have a team of pretty much like a data engineering and data team that is like uh, has the same incentives as your growth team to like build this on your own yeah yeah and um you not know, too many people do it so, so to answer the question yeah it's like very rare you see something like that more like the later stage companies um they have pretty like engineering heavy uh employee base like you know, around 400 plus employees is when you kind of see something like this come into play. Yeah. I mean, let, let, let's simplify it, right? Because there's probably some companies um, that are smaller here and some that are bigger that like just want to get started. What channels can we start with? Like, like how, how, how do we get this going? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think uh, that's always the, like the, with the dark funnel in general, it's just like, that is like the, top question is like, how do I even get started? Like, what do I do? Um, I think most people have like a pretty good intuition of, you know, I don't think one channel is better than the other. I think most people have a pretty good intuition of like, okay, our users are developers. They're on GitHub, they're on Hacker News, they're on these these channels that like developers hang out on, like, let's go there. Or, uh, you know, our customers, our, our target audience is, you know, sellers and marketers or whatever, like they're on LinkedIn, like, like start with the channels where you like the watering holes where you know your audience is. Um, I mean, that's like really obvious, like general advice, I guess. But um, I think that, you know, just starting with one in one place, like really helps, you know, scope down the like analysis paralysis and like uh, gets people like on the right track. And then you can kind of like expand after that, you know. I had, had an awesome question come in and uh, yes. from, from Emily that isn't the answer pretty much fuck you. If you try to get someone to buy a product from liking a post, you know, like looking at the Chris Walker example, right? Like the comments, like, okay. Totally, totally. Talking about Dark Funnel. Um, it's Chris Walker's audience. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I find labs, they're, they're fan people. I'm going to just come in and be like, hey, saw so you liked a post from somebody, not me. Can you buy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that is kind of like where the art of art of the sale happens, right? It's like, um, of course, if you just like jump in there and you're like, you know, take, 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 like, like people aren't going to respond and they'd be like, oh, you're spamming me, like, get out of here. Um, but it's a really good, it's a really good point and a really good question. I think that's kind of like where the training of how to like do this in the right way and how to like add value to those conversations. Um, is is kind of like the the art of it like how do you how do you do that the right way um but even like you know i i feel like knowing someone's interested is it's maybe like i don't know if it's too disingenuous if it's like spying on someone but like knowing someone's interested in this topic they're in your icp like you don't have to actually like message them or like slide into their comments uh, you can just follow them or try and connect with them. And then when they do end up connecting with you, inevitably some people will, then you can kind of say like, hey, I saw that you like this post. Like here's like my my company's like helping out with stuff that's related to this. Like, let me know if you're interested. Like, I feel like that's pretty harmless. So there's ways to do it with grace. 
Yeah, and I, I believe there's also ways to like have different levels of intent. You have the, the person that just commented on one, but they're part of a company that's interacted in various ways as well. It's like, you know, um, I saw that you commented here, but I've also seen like everyone in your marketing department, like interact in this community or this or that, like, right? Yeah, like, cause you see familiar faces and then it like makes your chances so much likelier to like get connected with someone or like to start a conversation. If, if like the whole company is like bought in or you have multiple people bought in and like adding value and, and jumping into these conversations for sure, yeah. And what, what, what like enrichment match rates do you see typically? Uh, so it very like, this is one thing that varies greatly from channel to channel. Like I feel like the enrichment rate on like pulling in data from the LinkedIn API is really high, um, like 70 to 80%. Uh, and then there's these other channels like Reddit, which, um, is kind of anonymous by nature, uh, or pseudo anonymous by nature. And those ones are really hard to get a match rate. Although we do get a match rate, like, 10% or something like that. I, I don't know what the actual number is. We do get match rates from, from Reddit, but it's pretty uh, hard to get a good match rate there. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, you know, shout out to to Jane in in the audience. She's saying, I think too many people follow Chris Walker because she does. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> it was like, an easy example to go to, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but commenting on Sarasa, that that's super interesting. Like, dude, this is... It, it, and. You know, somebody also commented, um, you know, all this effort versus just having your reps and CSMs ask how they heard about us. Well, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think, um, I mean, that's a good point. Like, you know, you can ask about how people hear about you on your, on your forms, but like at that point, they're like that far along the, the journey where like they're, they know about your product, they are opting in, they have like a clear problem they're trying to solve and like, I think there's a lot of the uh, buyer's journey that is before that, that you can jump in and like create demand or, or influence. And so like, yes, that's one way to like do attribution um, is to just ask on a form, but, uh, but it doesn't like solve the problem of like finding intent and like creating pipeline from that intent at, uh, from channels that are from at a point when someone's like not actually signed up for your product. Right. We or hand raisers. That's a new popular term. Is like they're hand raisers, right? <laughs> 100%. We, got, we got the question that's on the back of everybody's mind. Um, I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but can this tool mine open communities, i.e. Slack? Uh, no. So so that is, you know, I, I kind of alluded to that um, for when I was talking about permissioning, but it's not like you can just jump into the Rev Genius Slack and like, you know, grab all of the data feed there. I think there's some nefarious tools that do that, but you like in, in order to do that with common room, you need to have permissions. Like Jared can hook up rev genius slack to common room to like pull all that data in. But like me as like a random user can't do that. So now I'm, I'm curious, what's like the most common use case that you're seeing now plugged common room in, you know, with having all these data sources and stuff versus before, like seeing people on a post, you just said you could manually do that, right? Um, what, what are you seeing the most often and most frequently, like, like use cases to help reps with their outbound and connecting with people? Yeah, yeah. I think people like, um, I mean, I don't know if the, the, like the actual like most common thing is, it's really like, okay, the, 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 the like simple example is like, there's so much, there's all this activity happening like in, in different channels and like reps just want to be kn like, know when that activity is from one of their target accounts or like marketing wants to know that like these accounts are active so that they can like put them into some sort of like ABM type of targeting. Right. So that is like the main use case is like, I just want to know at first what's happening because like I am blind to it right now. And so like from, from that point, when you start to identify like, you know, who are the right, who are these people? Like, are they, you know, people that we would want to like sell into or that could get value from our product? Then it's like, okay, what did they say? Like, how do we follow up in, in like a helpful way? Um, but I think it just starts with just like knowing what's happening in general is like the very first thing people do. All right. We have time for one more question. There's a bunch that came in. Do you supplement what you can track by modeling what you can't? Um, do I supplement what we can track by modeling what we can't? We've been looking for an insights guesstimates on dark social, the people who read or watch all of your posts, but don't like it comment. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Well, um, you can't. You, so, so the APIs won't pass that data if it's like dark. Like that's super, super dark. I don't think you can get. You, you can't know what people like saw as an impression. I think you know, common room this doesn't do that. But, <laughs> yeah, you can. You can. I think. I think LinkedIn does give you the um, uh, analytics of like this company. Uh, you saw this amount of impressions or whatever like that in like the LinkedIn like demographics like. Uh, uh, what's it called? I, I I don't know what the name for it is, but it's like analytics for like LinkedIn, but that, that won't tell you the individual. It'll only tell you like the companies and like profiles and stuff like that. So that's a proxy. Um, but it's not like, I think identity, like the, the hard thing is identity plus intent. And that's what we do really well. And like, that's what your sellers need. Like an account doing something is not all that helpful. Right. We're going to get you these questions. The rest of them, we have yeah, some, some questions. Just, uh, like email me or hit me up on LinkedIn with any questions. I'm happy to answer or them. Hit me up in the Web Genius Slack one to one. Oh yeah, Web Genius Slack. I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do that, and, and and we have attribution on that because we use Common Room. Oh yeah, do that so that way it's all trackable. We can. Oh, oh well, you, you can't see DMs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can't see the, so so we'll come up with a, a public channel, Pragya, um, where we can <laughs> put the questions from this in. And then we could do a quick um, recap somewhere along the way of the questions that came in. Um, and, and happy to do that. Happy and to do that. Probably contribute it directly to Pipe Live, and, and you could be a part of it in real time. Cool. And then if you do that, we'll, we'll yeah, I'll, I'll put our sellers on 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 a, your your account. So yeah, <laughs> to tie well, it all circle. Yeah. Thank you. I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm ecstatic to have you, Kevin. Thank you again for being here. For, thank you, Common Room, for being a part of sponsoring Rev Genius and RevCon. And it's been an honor. The next session is actually me pre-recorded oh. with Morgan Ingram. <laughs> so we're going to, we're going to go over there now. Thank you all again so much. I'm excited to show you what Morgan and I spoke about at Saster. Nice. Thanks everyone. See ya. How do I leave this thing? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to close the window.